So um, now that we have that under our belts, I wanna talk about how we measure distance using the method of Cepheid variable stars. So Cepheid variable stars have a brightness that fluctuates over time. And if we actually measure their brightness over a long period of time, then we get something called the light curve. So here, this is the magnitude of our star plotted over time. And it regularly, um, well, so normally we would, we would set the magnitude scale. So negative values are up here and positive are down here. So it goes brighter and dimmer over time in a regularly repeating periodic fashion. And the uh, time that it takes for this pattern to repeat, so to go from you know, a dip to a dip or a peak to a peak, that's called the period of the light curve. So the period has units of time. So which one of these arrows do you suppose marks the period? All right, so if you said B or D, you're halfway correct. Uh, the correct answer is E because both B and D mark the period of this particular light curve. So in order to you know, say, where does the pattern start repeating again? Um, you could use the minimum to a minimum. You could use maximum to maximum, or you could even use a, um, a specific point where it crosses the kind of midline to the time when it does that again in the same part of the light curve. All right, so any of these could be used to measure the period, but usually it's easier to use either the uh, dips or the peaks. All right, so Henrietta Swan Lovett was the astronomer who discovered the Cepheid variable stars. Um, she was one of a team of women who recorded astro data at the Harvard Observatory. Um, collectively, these women were known as the Harvard computers. Their story is very interesting and I recommend learning more about it. Um, the um, contribution of Henrietta Leavitt in particular was that she discovered that the period of variable stars in the small Magellanic cloud was related to their apparent magnitudes. So the brightnesses that we measure here on earth. Um, she found this relationship in 1908. And this is her paper, 1777 variables in the Magellanic clouds. Um, so when I asked you earlier what you have spent a extended amount of focus on, right? There's lots of different answers to that question. For Henrietta Leavitt, it was looking at Cepheid variable stars and cataloging literally thousands of them um, and measuring very carefully all of their periods from their light curves. So you can imagine what a gargantuan task this would have been to identify, right? First, she had to find those stars in the Magellanic clouds. Then she had to monitor them for days or weeks, each one. And then she had to measure their periods and catalog their absolute magnitudes and make tables like this one. So just the, the sheer amount of data um, where the you know, images of the stars would have been recorded on these plates. Um, it's just a lot of data. So the relevant pieces of data here are the period and then the maximum and minimum um, apparent magnitude. So what Henrietta was able to do was plot the magnitude of the stars versus their period. And this is what she found. As the period of the Cepheid variable star is longer and longer, its apparent magnitude tends to be smaller. So in other words, the brighter stars tend to have longer periods in their brightness variations. So they're more slowly varying the brighter they are. And so um, these were all in the small Magellanic clouds. So they were all basically at the same distance from Earth. And so what this means is that since they're all at the same distance, if their apparent magnitudes are varying in time, that means their absolute magnitudes are varying too. So these stars are actually getting brighter and dimmer out there in space. Um, the reason that they thought this might be back in the day was potentially that they were part of a binary system so that they were actually coming closer and farther to Earth in their orbits around a common center of gravity. But now we know that it's actually because they're in a particular period of stellar evolution where their um, radius is changing and so their luminosity is changing as they grow and shrink. And they do this at a, at a regular clip with a regular period until finally, when that stage of life is over, they continue and evolve toward their death. So that's the Cepheid variable stars. 
the relationship between period and magnitude is generally known as the period luminosity relationship. You might think it should say period magnitude relationship, but this is what it's called. And the way that we got from apparent magnitude to absolute magnitude was by um, the work of some other astronomers. So um, Harlow Shapley, Shapley, Einar Hertzsprung, Henry Norris Russell, they needed to calibrate Levitt's relationship uh, to find the absolute magnitude. In order to do that, they needed to know the actual distance to at least one of the Cepheid stars um, uh, using a different relationship. So they used parallax to measure the relationship to only a handful, I think, you know, 14 or 17, a small number of those stars in order to calibrate this relationship so that it did relate period to absolute magnitude. And the reason that you want to do this is because if you can use the period of a Cepheid star to find its absolute magnitude and then measure the apparent magnitude directly, then you can use those together to calculate distance. It's just as we discussed, the, the brightness of an object is proportional to its luminosity divided by its distance squared. That's similar to saying the apparent magnitude is proportional to its absolute magnitude divided by distance squared. Well, the relationship would go the other way. There would be negative signs involved, but that's the basic idea. So this is all um, wrapped into a fairly simple equation which you're going to use in the lab today to calculate the distance to four different Cepheid stars. It was using the method of Cepheid variable stars that Hubble was able to measure the distance to Andromeda. Remember we talked about that last week. So it was a Cepheid variable star in Andromeda. Um, Hubble used its light curve, used the period luminosity relationship from Levitt and then measured its apparent magnitude to find its distance. So it relied on the work of Henrietta Leavitt and Harlow Shapley um, in order for Hubble to make this huge discovery that Andromeda was actually another galaxy and not just a, you know, a nebula. So that's kind of how this kind of big picture of extragalactic astronomy got um, built uh, was by those individuals.